Vikings are part of pop culture and have always fascinated people for decades, even for centuries, one could say. And they are part of pop culture, thanks to shows like Vikings and the Marvel Thor movies. And even if those pieces of media happened years ago, the interest in Vikings is still present in Western society, showing in countless of people cosplaying as Vikings, history enthusiasts, metal and rock fans, etc. Someone wearing a necklace with a small Mjolnir as a pendant or rune tattoos was a sign of someone being a metalhead, a huge Norse mythology nerd, but sadly it has become an indicator of the person who has that necklace like having quite concerning political ideas but is it fair to think that is it fair to assume that someone with a Mjolnir as a, as a necklace or with rune tattoos as someone who is a white supremacist? The thing is that a lot of white supremacists are obsessed with Vikings. That's just a fact. But it's not only that people that are within the spectrum of political ideologies are obsessed with Nordic culture but also that they appropriate it. They see white supremacy and the universe of pre-Christianity Norse culture as indivisible from white supremacy. Just because someone is a Viking enthusiast, it doesn't mean that they are a white supremacist. There's nothing wrong with exploring and having fun with something you enjoy in a harmless way. There are a lot of historians, archaeologists, pagans, LARPers, and just people in general who are working very hard to stop white supremacy from appropriating Vikings and Norse mythology and culture. I have a lot of respect for them, especially those who fight very hard against misinformation about these topics, like, for example, archaeologist Professor Howard Williams, with whom I collaborated with in the past, and I will talk more about him here in this episode, and other accounts that I will include in this episode. And also, I want to point out that Al Jazeera did a small documentary about the Swedish organization Vikingar Mut Racism, or Vikings Against Racism, which is very interesting so check it out. It's going to be here in this episode's description, the link. The problem is that white supremacists take Viking lore and Norse mythology, they misappropriate it, even they change reality and bring misinformation just to have this fit into the small box that white supremacy is. The irony of these fans of the Aryan race is that they take the complexity and history of it and trim the parts that they don't like and add whichever crap they can come up with so it can fit their own agenda. So in this episode, I want to explore that. Why are they so obsessed with Vikings? What is it about Vikings that makes white supremacists so obsessed with them and just want to appropriate it? I want to start with, when did Vikings become white? Here's the thing. Scandinavians weren't always white. In this 1751 essay, Observations Concerning the Increase of Mankind, Peopling of Countries, etc., Benjamin Franklin describes Scandinavians as non-white people and referring to Saxons and English as the real white people of the world. What we need to understand, and I need you to please understand this before we can continue further in this episode, is that race is a social construct, which means that it exists not in objective reality, but because of human interactions, since humans agree that it exists. Race as a biological reality doesn't exist. And before we continue this episode, as I mentioned it before, I need you to understand that. And just a quick note, a while ago, I did an episode where I discuss in more detail concepts like race, social construct, ethnicity, etc. So you can go check it out after this episode. I will include the link in the description of this episode and don't forget to subscribe. Let's continue. How did Scandinavians become white? According to Philip Goldner in the journal article Evangelized Americanized White Religion and Chicago's Immigrants, Christianity was the reason why Scandinavian migrants started to be considered white in the United States. 
So here's the thing. The United States in the late 19th century was going through a huge demographic change. And according to the racial definitions of the time, that meant that the United States wouldn't be a white majority country anymore, mainly due to the influx of European migrants coming into the country, especially Scandinavians. So Anglo-American Protestants use Western Christianity as an important cultural indicator of whiteness to accept Scandinavians as white, and especially since Scandinavian migrants were Protestant Christians, making them the perfect candidates to become white Americans. American Anglo-Protestants would even travel all the way to Scandinavia to recruit fellow Nordic Protestants to come to the United States. And I find this very interesting when we connect this with Christianity in Scandinavia. And according to the official website of the National Museum of Denmark, Scandinavia becoming Christian was an important political move which helped the region's relationship with the rest of Europe. And even like Viking merchants, for example, they saw Christianity as a necessary evil if they wanted to keep their trade networks across Europe. Now we're gonna talk about Nordicism and the Nazis. To understand why white supremacists are obsessed with Vikings, we need to talk about Nordicism and the Nordic race, which are both pseudo-scientific concepts. Nordicism is a 19th century ideology that was born from the scientific racism and the theory of the Aryan race. Nordicism believes in the existence of the Nordic race as a superior pure racial group. The Nordic race doesn't exist. The Nordic race never existed. In the scientific journal article Norwegian Physical Anthropology and the Idea of a Nordic Master race by John Roen Killingstad explains that Nordicism involves the belief that men of the Nordic race tall, slender, fair-skinned, blonde, blue-eyed, narrow face, narrow nose, long-headed individuals are qualitatively superior to the remainder of mankind. They are the creators of civilization and their passing marks the passing of civilization. Nordicism is pseudo-archaeology on steroids. Falsified archaeology and nationalism myth-making paved the way to the Nazis and a lot of fascist and far-right movements. Nazis love Vikings and were heavily inspired by Nordicism, which was very present in their propaganda. They would often use some old Norse imagery for a lot of their posters and ads, and Nazis were so interested in Vikings because they saw them as part of the legendary and pure Nordic race. Hans Gunther was a German eugenicist and advocate of scientific racism who was the main racial theorist of the Nazi party and a major influence of Nazi racial ideology. His theories were heavily inspired by Nordicism. In the scientific journal article Norwegian Physical Anthropology and the Idea of a Nordic Master Race, John Roen Killingstad explains that Hans Gunther wanted to implement the ideas of Nordicism into policies, but it was almost impossible for practical reasons. For example, less than 10% of the German population back then displayed the morphological traits of the pure Nordic. Nordicism has always been an possible aspirational racial fever dream. However, the racial ideology of Nordicism was the base of teachings at German schools. And by the way, while I was researching this episode, I was shocked to learn that Hans Gunther went to have a normal life after World War II. He went to a post-war trial but was found not accountable for what he did, especially since a lot of German scholars and universities defended him. The thing is like Gunther never abandoned his beliefs. He even published a book about how eugenics can help state sponsor family planning and he was a holocaust denier until his death. And I will not go into details about Nazi racial ideology because it could take me hours just to talk about it and it's not only full of lies but it's not just insane and it's based a hundred percent on pseudo-archaeology, eugenics and a lot of misappropriation of other cultures, symbols and history. Now we're going to talk about Viking symbols and white supremacist lore. From underground cultures to the mainstream media and pop culture, we see people getting inspiration from the Viking Age. 
The bands that were part of the Norwegian black metal movement in the 90s use a lot of Norse mythology and history as inspiration, which makes sense because they're Norwegian and that period of history is an important part of their cultural heritage and country's history. Not only most black metal bands from Norway and Sweden are extremely anti-Christian, but the ones that are white supremacists or have white supremacist members use that aggressive rejection of Christianity as an important ideological point connected with their Nordicist revivalist Nazi ideas which I believe is so ironic because Christianity is the main reason why Scandinavians started to be considered white. Not all black metal bands are white supremacist but if I start talking about how many of them are I will never finish this episode. Norse mythology symbols and culture are frequently misappropriated by far-right individuals, white supremacist groups, which also include religious white supremacist organizations. During the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville in 2017, some of the protesters came with banners showing Thor's hammer, Mjolnir the perpetrator of the Christchurch mosque shooting in New Zealand in 2019 wrote in his manifesto, See you in Valhalla and feature symbols related with Old Norse mythology like the Black Sun and Odin's Cross. Far-right Swedish party Sverige Demokraterna, Sweden Democrats in English, comes from the Swedish Nazi movement of the 90s and at the beginning they would use the picture of a Viking as one of the symbols of their party. The Nordic Resistance Movement is a Nordic neo-Nazi movement and their insignia is a rune. Even though it is considered a terrorist organization by experts and it is banned in Finland because of it, here in Sweden they are also a political party. There are a lot of white supremacist groups, including religious ones, that have completely misappropriated Viking culture and Old Norse mythology, and it could take me days talking about most of them. Most of these groups are neo volkish which according to the Southern Law Poverty Center that monitors hate groups in the United States, neo volkish adherents base their spirituality on the survival of those descended from white Europeans and the preservation of what they claim are dead or dying cultures. Such individuals and groups use a variety of terms to describe their spirituality such as Odinism or Wotanism, but sometimes they co-pot other non-racist denominations such as Hathenism, Asatru or Paganism. Qualifiers like Norse tradition, Germanic or Proto-Germanic are sometimes attached to those terms. Let's talk about Asatru Folk Assembly. Asatru Folk Assembly is the US biggest neo volkish group and it was founded in the 90s in Northern California, of course a very traditional Scandinavian region, and it came out after the dissolution of the Viking Brotherhood. They are an extremist white nationalist group and they believe that white people are the only people who can practice pre-Christian Norse and Germanic religion because only white people have ancestral roots in Northern Europe. Therefore, only white people can join their organization. Asatru Folk Assembly is active in New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, and some parts in Europe, according to them. So if you're interested, I also have an episode on Patreon where I talk more about them including me doing a video reaction to their official website and just talking with you more about them so if you want to you can go check it out on my Patreon. So Asatru Folk's assembly beliefs are based on pseudo-archaeology like Nordicism for example and they also support the confederacy because somehow they believe that Vikings are connected with the confederacy in the south of the United States but okay I guess and also they're openly xenophobic, bigoted, anti-semitic, racist, and they see women as just things to bring white babies into the world. And a lot of the things are so dense that I'm afraid I will get my video flag if I tell you more about their beliefs. And that's why it's so important to talk about misappropriation and the dangers of pseudo-archaeology when we're talking about this topic. As the Southern Law Poverty Center is quick to clarify, these categorizations can be confusing and no form of paganism is inherently bigoted. Now let's talk about did Vikings wear dreadlocks? Vikings are part of pop culture 
we're clear on that. I heard a lot of good things about the movie The Norseman. I will watch it and upload my reaction on Patreon and make a commentary about it. So if you want to check it out, you can do it on my Patreon. And continuing in the same parentheses, I want to thank my Patreons for supporting this project. Moving on, I want to take this opportunity to address a very important topic that has divided the internet community, especially those who appreciate Viking culture. Here's the thing. There's a subject of Viking cosplayers who claim to be descendants of all Viking kings and they see themselves as keeping the sacred traditions alive and they love to claim that Vikings during the Viking Age had face tattoos, box braids and dreadlocks and they use fan art as irrefutable evidence of it. But did Vikings wear dreadlocks and had face tattoos? No. Why Vikings? It is normal for a hegemonic masculinity to be obsessed with all civilizations and empires, like for example, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, among others. But comparing to them, the Viking Age was small in comparison. For example, I understand the obsession with the Roman Empire. It was, after all, a huge empire, but the Vikings was small and short in comparison with the Roman Empire. So what is it about Vikings that is so appealing? to white supremacists. For a brand of white supremacists, Vikings represent an expression of whiteness and supremacy completely outside of Christianity with a strong cultural connection with this ancient civilization of strong white men. But the concept of whiteness and race that we know nowadays didn't exist during the Viking Age. Race is a social construct that is quite recent in human history's timeline. And one of the reasons why so many white supremacists are obsessed with Vikings is because it makes their ideas about race, ethnicity, and culture much more older and as part of ancient wisdom, which again, is not based in any evidence. That's the reason why Nordicism is a pseudoscience. That's what the reason why the Nordic race is part of pseudo-archaeology. And that's the reason why pseudo-archaeology can be very, very dangerous. I want to directly quote Professor Howard Williams, archaeologist. This clip is from a TikTok live we did about Vikings and politics a while ago. And if you want to watch the whole interaction, I will include the link in this episode description. And I also invite you to follow Professor Howard Williams' content. He's also on TikTok. He's very, very active there. And he's trying to make archaeology accessible, but also fun. And so I think one of the reasons why, to answer your, your question, Manga Podcast, is one of the reasons why I think Vikings are so popular, not only in the Nordics, but also broadly, is that they can be so many different things. They can be the worst enemy you fought against and won. They can be your, the protagonist. They can be the antagonist. They can be the heroes. They can be, um, they can be a bit silly. They can be a bit ridiculous. They can be really violent. They can be really brave and adventurous. There's Viking into that Viking label. You can push um, hyper masculine men, hyper feminine women, housewives, warrior women. You know, it works for men and women. There's so many uh, stylized tropes. But one of the things I think is really important to remember, it's not the only thing, is that even though it doesn't make any rational sense, even though it doesn't make any historical sense, the Viking Age sits as a kind of uh, pivot on a seesaw or a fulcrum between prehistory, which is all of the time leading up to about the year 1000, right? And the Christian Middle Ages and what comes from that. So it's a kind of exciting time because it's just before history in, in a full rich sense which is christian and kingdoms and authority and power and it's just after this in i'm not my understanding i'm saying in popular conception you know i know it's not this the the millennia of primitive times so it's the people who lived in the viking age are on that cusp of history they're they're becoming civilized and the vikings are a kind of uh, if, if you want to use a hollywood movie they're a story arc of redemption from pagan to christian they are you can see them as bad, but also good. They're anti-heroes and heroes. And so, and, and then this is why white, white fantasists love it, because it's a time before. And the other thing is it's a time before people of color. They, 
that's not true but that that is a, is a light little safe space where they can go and imagine a nice happy time where we just simply went out raiding and we came we we i don't, I don't mean me i mean where the <laughs> but where society was simple it, it's like a 1950s trad wives but in the viking age but you know so i suppose my two points are it's seductive because anything can be viking you know anyone can be viking and and also it's a time before the worries of the modern world where we can some people can imagine the ills of the modern world which are all from immigrants yeah don't take place the problem is of course by definition the viking world is all about trade exchange enslavement yeah. uh missionaries yeah you can't right. have a viking age without any of those cultural exchanges but it's it so it's utterly paradoxical it, it's it's a but you have to be a racist to make it work you know From Nordicism to the anonymous TikTok accounts with Thor holding Mjolnir as a profile picture leaving racist comments, all this is misappropriation of Viking culture. And shout out to everybody who's fighting that misappropriation. I believe that white people who reclaim Old Norse mythology away from white supremacy and deconstruct whiteness are doing more against racism than so-called white allies who just take spaces from black and POC people, do cultural appropriation in some instances and profit from our pain, our experiences, our work and just censors us in a lot of cases. And remember, Odin was the old father, not the son father, and he didn't hang himself on Yggdrasil to get the runes knowledge to have some white supremacists appropriate them. Thank you so much for watching and listening don't forget to subscribe comment and share tell me what you think in the comment section about this episode and if you want me to make more videos like this source material for this episode as well as recommended accounts and videos are in this episode's description i'm also on tiktok instagram and most podcast platforms i have patreon where i have a lot of exclusive content including the react videos that i mentioned throughout this episode and once again and I want to thank my Patreons. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for believing in this project. Thank you once again and I see you next time. <laughs>